Among the principal leaders of the Stonewall Uprising was Marsha P. Johnson, a Black trans woman and community activist who made an impact on public health by providing support services for homeless queer youth in New York City and helping to call attention to the AIDS epidemic. Johnson, a cherished figure in the Greenwich Village, marched in the first gay pride parade, joined the AIDS act advocacy group ACT UP, and co-founded the Straight Transvestite Action Revolutionaries with fellow trans activist Sylvia Rivera. Bill Wilson is a prominent gay HIV activist known for his groundbreaking work within the LGBTQ plus and African American communities. As the founder of the Black AIDS Institute in 1999, Wilson has been a leading voice in addressing the disproportionate impact of HIV and AIDS on Black Americans. Through education, advocacy, and community outreach, he has tirelessly fought to raise awareness, reduce stigma, and increase access to HIV prevention and treatment resources. Wilson's advocacy has been instrumental in shaping public health policies and programs aimed at combating HIV AIDS disparities and promoting health equity. Bayard Rustin was a key figure in the civil rights movement and a close advisor to Martin Luther King Jr. He was also openly gay, though his sexuality was often downplayed or overlooked due to his societal attitudes of the time. Rustin played a significant role in organizing the 1963 March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom and was a vocal advocate for nonviolent resistance and social justice. Bayard's Rustin's advocacy and leadership in the civil rights movement, while not directly related to medicine, had indirect impacts on public health and healthcare access through his efforts to address systematic discrimination and inequality. Dr. Paula Murray, a queer woman of color, made significant contributions to the medical field as a civil rights activist, lawyer, and episcopal priest. While her primary focus was on law and social justice, Murray's advocacy extended to healthcare access and gender equality. As one of the first African American women to earn a JD degree from Yale Law School, Murray's work laid the groundwork for legal battles that ultimately led to advancements in healthcare rights and protections from marginalized communities, including LGBTQ individuals. Dr. Antonia Noveo, a lesbian Latina, is a prominent figure in the medical field. She served as the 14th Surgeon General of the United States from 1990 to 1993, making history as both the first woman and the first Hispanic to hold the position. During her tenure, Dr. Novea focused on public health issues such as child immunizations, smoking secession, and HIV AIDS awareness. Her leadership and advocacy efforts have had a lasting impact on healthcare policy and public health initiatives in the United States. As we celebrate their achievements and honor their legacies, let us continue to recognize and support the vital role LGBTQ plus voices play in shaping a more equitable and compassionate healthcare landscape for generations to come. Welcome back to Healthy Living. I'm here to wish you all the best in the following year. I will unfortunately be leaving next year, so this is the last you'll see of me. But don't worry, you'll be in good hands. And don't forget to take care of yourself. Bye! Hello, my name is Caitlin. And I'm Joe. Next year, we'll be passed a tour to the Healthy Living section. You may have seen us in the Med Career section and some other videos. A refresh on Healthy Living. In Healthy Living, we go over topics that concern our health, mental, physical, and other forms. This upcoming year, you'll be seeing a lot more of us, and we'll dive into different topics concerning our health. We, we hope to see you next year, and we hope you enjoyed this year of Healthy Living. Good morning, and welcome back to another day of learning tips. My name is Pokin, and today is my last day of doing learning tips. <gasps> But worry not, I'm here to excitedly introduce the new successor of Learning Tips, Alexandra Ferrer. Hello, my name is Alexandra and I'm going to be Learning Tips' new successor and today we'll discuss everything about study groups and creation to execution. Part 1. Purpose of a study group. 
Studying groups are one of the most effective ways to memorize information, especially when the core exercise is recalling information with friends. On the upside, study group can be extremely fun to be around friends, help correct and fill in missing information you don't know, finish assignments, or share learning tips like this one. On the downside, it can be distracting if unregulated, hard to schedule sometimes, and can take a lot of time. But today, we'll show you a way around the cons. Point two, creating a study group. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of study groups. I've seen groups in person, over Zoom, over Kahoot, over text, or even online anonymous forms. It all depends on which you'd be better working with. Most of the time, you're encouraged to work with peers and friends who are taking your class or above like an AP. This way, you both know what you're talking about. Anonymous forums can be harder to locate, but they can help if you have a contact with an expert like a college major or other peers taking the same class. For this video, we'll talk about friend study groups. Starting a study group is easy. Make sure that you have their contacts and simply ask if they want to be in a study group. Then create a group chat specifically for that study group. If you have familiar friends, then you can purpose the study group for multiple subjects. But if not, it may be better to restrict the study group to only one subject. Point three, studying. Now there's many kinds of study groups, but I divide them in person and online. Usually you want to figure out a time you want to meet, or you can share a topic in the chat and ask people to explain it for you. If you're doing a meeting, whether on Zoom or in person, you may want to prepare. Prepare some questions, many of which you don't know, like asking what this subject means or how it's solved. You can bring homework questions or decide on an activity. By activity, I mean the fun stuff. For example, you can do a whiteboard like on Canva or a Google slide, rip Jamboard, to create a summary of a unit. You can play Quizlet, Kahoot, or Gimkit that you or someone else made. Quiz each other on flashcards. Play Jeopardy. Watch videos or even exchange homework problems like on College Board or Khan Academy. Next, you have to keep your mind on track. You can try assigning roles like a facilitator to help remind yourself to stay at the topic in hand in case of this aggression or move on to the next topic. It's all about keeping the mutual responsibility. The goal is to study. However, feel free to have fun and play around if you want to take a break or finish your task. Finally, have fun. The study group is designed to help you bond and connect with your peers, not stress you out. And for the last time, goodbye and have a wonderful break.